In the last lecture, I introduced the basics of circle statements, including these concepts and keywords like select, from, limit, order by, basic where conditions, and basic operators. In this lecture, we'll show you how we can pull data from related standard and custom objects using dot notation and subqueries. In my third and final lecture on Sockle, I'll dive deeper into aggregates, advanced operators and wildcards, working with dates and numbers, and more advanced where conditions. So, let's dive in and build on what we have learned about Sockle. The nice thing about Sockle is that not only does it let you query a single object, but it also lets you query any related objects. As a Salesforce admin, you know how to create formula fields that pull data from a parent field into the child. You also know that you can aggregate data from children up to a parent. Sockle has ways to pull data from children to parents and vice versa. Let's tackle the easiest type of relationship direction first, pulling data from a parent to a child. Let me quickly open the schema builder. I have selected only the contact and account objects. You can see that both of them are related to each other. In this case, the contact is a child and the account is a parent. So you might be wondering, how do we identify which one is a parent and which one is a child? Here, if you carefully notice, in the contact object, we have a relationship that is looking up to the account. The object from which the relationship starts is the child and the object that the relationship is looking up to is the parent. This code snippet shows how we could grab the account name along with the contact name for any contact whose email address is jane.smith at gmail.com. I want to point out a few things that are going on here. If you haven't noticed, it is the dot notation. When you're looking for data in the parent object, or grandparent, or great-grandparent, you would use something called the dot notation. This is how we say which related object we want to travel towards from the contact. In our case, we are interested in the account name. So that would be contact.account.name. In plain English, we would say start at the contact, move up to its account, and grab the name field within the account. Note that we always start with the object that we reference in our from clause. This is how we work with out-of-the-box standard Salesforce relationships. But does this change when we are working with custom objects? It kind of changes. The good news is that we basically use the same syntax when dealing with custom relationships as with standard relationships. To get to a related object, you go through the relationship name. For standard relationships, that happens to be the same as the object name. But for custom relationships, you use the API name of the relationship field, but with a double underscore R rather than double underscore C. This is rather clever of Salesforce as it ensures that nothing will break if they happen to add a standard object with the same name as our custom object. Anyways, let's look at an example. Imagine our contact object includes a custom lookup field to reference the contact's favorite book. When we created the lookup relationship, we used the API field name of book double underscore C. And therefore, the relationship API name will be book double underscore R. Get it? R for relationship. If we wanted to pull out the contact's name, their favorite book, and its author, then our code would look like this. Here, we are navigating from the contact to the book object and to its name as well as the author. Are there any limits on relationships? You can have up to 20 relationships specified within a single query, and within each relationship, you can have up to 5 levels. This might sound limiting, but it's quite a lot. For example, the following would be only 3 levels, and that's how many relationship levels you're spanning. So now that we know how to look for data in an object and related parent objects, what about moving down the relationship path from a parent to its children. There are many reasons why you would want to pull data from the child related to a parent. Many of these have analogies to various types of Salesforce reports. Pulling data from the child to the parent object. Here, using the report builder, we are trying to show all the names and email addresses of all contacts from the book supply company account. To achieve the same functionality using Sockle, our query would look like this. 
running this code would have the same results as the report builder. Take a deep breath and say, I can do this. Now let's tackle this one piece at a time. If you look at the code, lines 2 and 3 should look pretty standard by now. They are asking the query to pull data from the account object where the name field is equal to book supply company. The first part of line 1 is also pretty straightforward. Select the account name. But what are we doing with the second part of line 1? We are running what is called a subquery. It is selecting the first name, last name, and email fields from the contact and displaying them along with the other field we have included in the first part of the select clause. There are a few things to know about subqueries. We don't use dot notation because that only works from the child to the parent and not the other way around. For standard relationships, we use the plural version of the subquery object name, for example, contacts instead of contact. For custom relationships, this could be pretty much be anything, whatever is set up in the child relationship name within the field definition. Also note that the subquery is surrounded by parentheses and there is a comma between all the account fields and the subquery. Let's move on to the second scenario, filtering a parent result set within the data from the child. Using the report builder, let's create an account report of all accounts with opportunities that were closed one with a total amount of over $100. And the report would look like this. If you wanted to achieve the same thing using Sockle, our query would look like this. And if we run the query, our query would result in the following records. We'll step through this together. Line 1 is pretty standard. We are selecting the name and industry fields from the account object. Line 2 is also pretty standard. We are adding a filter that is asking for just the accounts where the ID of the account is included in a list. Remember our last lecture where we used in to pull out all the accounts within the western states. This is the same kind of in. But what are we doing in line 3? This is just like the first in statements we saw, but instead of hard coding the values into the list, we are pulling them from the database using a subquery. The subquery is selecting the account ID from the opportunity object where the opportunity stage name is closed 1 and the opportunity amount is greater than 100. Once that subquery runs, it will automatically return a comma delineated list of account IDs that we are then using to compare the ID for the account object in line 2. You are really getting into some interesting Sockle stuff. Let's summarize what we have learned from part 1 and 2. Sockle is used to pull data out of Salesforce objects, also known as querying the database. Like Apex for the most part, Sockle is not case sensitive. There are only two required keywords for every Sockle statement, select and from. Select lets you pick which fields you want to pull data from. From lets you pick what object you are pulling from. There are a number of optional keywords including limit, order by and where. Limit lets you control how many records you want to pull. Order by lets you control the sort order, ascending or descending. Where lets you filter the results. And within where clauses, you can use number of operators including equals, in and or. We can select the query fields from a single object and any objects that are related to it. There are limits on constructing queries. We can have up to 20 relationships per query and up to 5 levels within a single relationship. We use dot notation to move from a child up to a related parent object and we use subqueries to move from parent down to a child. We are at the end of part 2 of our introduction to Sockle. I hope that it wasn't too overwhelming. In the next lecture on Sockle, I'll dive deeper into aggregates, advanced operators and wildcards, working with dates and numbers, and more advanced wear conditions. It's going to be interesting.